Hey folks, it's uh, it's Free Symbol Friday. If you know me, if you're familiar with my work, you know I like to give away stuff every Friday. I've been trying to do that for a while now, so uh, it's a nice practice. I, I love doing it. I love helping people out, and uh, sometimes some of the stuff I give away is a little bit advanced, and this is one of those things. So what we're looking at right now is a rendering I just created, and... These renderings, it, it's tough to be competitive in the overseas market. So I tend to try to create systems that make it so that I'm doing these as efficiently as possible. So I've developed something to do this sidewalk pretty quickly. And it's meant to be used in any program that does an instancing based on a material region or you know a material ID is what I would say. So. Let me look at, I use Chief Architect to model my architectural products. And so here we go, we've got Chief Architect, we've got a polyline road, and then we've got a driveway, and the driveway is, well, the road is set so that it automatically cuts the curve for our driveway, okay? And this looks fine, this looks great, actually. But when you go to do an instancing based on a material, well, the way Chief runs terrain, is that this terrain actually lives underneath this driveway, which means that when you go to try to instance that material, it's going to put grass on the driveway as well underneath this slab. So, and it pokes through, and that's not good. So what I end up doing is I end up making material regions, I end up cutting the driveway away, and then if you're using, you know, an instancing of grass that's that's a large patch, that's good for large areas. But once you get up close to the border, it's nice to do small uh, patch instancing, which means that I'm ending up doing different terrain areas so that I can get close to the borders with small instancing, instancing grass versus uh, the interior space here. So something that's quick and easy for me to create a curb where I want to reveal and then I want a sidewalk. And in fact, I have other tools for this as well, but this is the one I'm giving away this week, is that I have a molding. I have a molding that I'm going to generate. And it's there's a very easy application of this molding. I'm going to do this from an elevation camera. We're going to end up placing a 3D molding. And a 3D molding has some benefits. So let me get into my user catalog. And I've got, here we go, sidewalk generator. And you can't just click and drag, unfortunately. You have to come up and get into your trim sections and draw out a 3D molding line. Now, where I'm going to draw this line is I'm going to pretty much snap it to the bottom of this curb, OK? That, in fact, is going to generate my molding. Let me flip this a little bit. Let me get into moldings. I'm going to say extrude inside polyline is unchecked. That's going to flip it right side up. And then we're going to ch check in 3D and see where that placed. It actually placed way back here. And we'll see what this is in just a minute. So it's a little bit finicky. you got to make sure that whatever plan view that you're in, if you get into Aldo, make sure that moldings are turned on because it's going to default to that. And in plan view, you'll notice it's pretty funny looking. So there are, there are a few caveats to this particular molding symbol. There we go, you can see that. Now, I already looked in 3D, I know this needed to be turned around, so that's fine, let me do that. And then I wanna drag this down until the point where it's in the scene and I can see what it's doing. There we are, and you see what's happening here is it's generating this curb. And then I just wanna come in here and kinda of line it up. Now, the way I imagine this happening is that it's going to overtake your existing curb. There we go, look at that. And before you know it, you have a pretty good looking curb. Now, the reason that I like to draw this in elevation is it gives us really finite control for dropping this section down. Notice there, it looked like I was driving it down downward. In fact, I was driving it as an offset. So in 2D, I purposely made this material pink so that you could see it versus your existing curb. 
now I can come in here, kind of get this place the way I want it to. Now I'm actually going to right click on this and even curve it a little bit and get it right up next to that driveway. Okay, and then I can kind of edit that curve back a little bit. In fact, I might even want to break this. You can break this just with your break tool. That way I'm getting it kind of an inside outside. There we go. And you can see what's happening here. The molding's getting broken up a bunch of different times. Now, usually I know that I can fix this in post edit. So I'm not too worried about these breaks. It's not a perfect system, but it works pretty well for the most part. So I'm going to show you how this uh, translates in twin motion. But first I need to drop in just a terrain feature right here. Now I personally like to color code these. It kind of helps me keep everything organized. And then we'll export the whole thing and let's see what this looks like. Now I'm going to do a DAE because this curve actually generates quite a few uh, poly faces. So I'm going to do a DAE. We'll do, let's see, we're, we'll call this curb. Oh, we already exported this once. Curb tests. There we go. All right. Now let me fire up Twin Motion and let's see what this looks like in Twin Motion. Now I'll leave it up to you to come up with a couple different materials that you can apply. Uh, you can use some of the built-in Twin Motion materials, so you can be applying dirt, you know, to that section that's dirt. You know, when you export from Chief Architect, you're not going to carry with it all the bump maps and and everything else that come with it. So. Um, whereas in Chief, if we hit a PBR and, and maybe we've got a surround here, it might look pretty good in Chief because I've got some, you know, extra bump maps going on in these. Um, it's not going to look the same in Twin Motion, so you have to uh, develop your own materials in Twin Motion for this to look correct. Now we've got Twin Motion fired up. Let me import and find my export. Herb tests, there it is. And I'm going to say I'm going to collapse by material for this uh, particular case. Now, usually when I export this curb, I'm exporting it by itself. I'm not actually exporting my entire file. I like to have my entire file be a 3DS file for the way that it organizes things based on names of components. Uh, and I like to have this curb organized by material. Something that's nice about the newer versions of Twin Motion is that they keep all of the um, access coordinates from Chief Architect in place so that we don't need to then locate our imports. They're actually imported in the correct place. So I could have imported just the curb by itself on its own layer with all other layers turned off and I wouldn't have had any problem with that. Let me go ahead and kill this ground data right here. Let's get in tight. Now here is where I would typically take my terrain and delete it. I don't need it anymore. I'm only using these terrain features to generate grass. Now I have a library of particular grass that I like to use. Get into my landscaping section. And let's see, I'm gonna do border grass here. And that's simple enough. It already generates a vegetation scatter that I can then click and populate. And look at that got that grass very quickly just in that curb area and it, now you notice we've got some problems over here again I'm I'm used to having to fix a few things in Photoshop that's simple for me so I'm not too worried about this it can't be a perfect simple I'd rather have the gaps in the curb be 3d than trying to create gaps in a curb in Photoshop it's much easier for me to just fill in these little hairs of grass here so there is a give and take here. Let me get back to my library. We'll go ahead and coat this other section. Uh, 
I didn't put a border in on this like I typically would, so this is not going to be perfect, but we'll just take a look at what it looks like. You can see it's overlaying the curve. That's because I didn't put that border in on the, on the back side. Now I could have put the border into this molding generator, but it's actually much easier to do it just by copying this section and then backtracking. Now let me show you what I mean about this because we can do it pretty quickly. I'm gonna take this section and let's go ahead and span this out so it's all the way to the building. In fact, we can span it out past the building if we'd like, okay? Now I wanna copy this and instead of paste holding, I'm just gonna grab this circle icon drag it straight down, tab or input, and I'm gonna give myself a 12 inch border. There we go. From here, I'm going to copy, paste, hold. Now what I've done is I've made two copies. One is so that I can do a subtraction from this border. It's a little tough to do it in 3D. You might have to get into the 2D to do this. So here's that border. Let me do a subtraction. There's that intersection there. Now when we get back to my full camera, we're gonna notice you can paint that intersection separate from that outer section. Look at that. So Alt F E for export, and then I'm gonna just do a Colada file again. Let me overwrite the same export. And you'll see what happens. Back in twin motion, I'm going to get into that import tab, control I, and I'm going to hit refresh on this curb test DAE. Look at that. It automatically updates so that I can take this grass section and I can go ahead and erase it if I want to. That's fine. Or I could just delete it straight from the library. I'm not too worried about it. Let me hit my plus. Now you see it's it's spilling into our border area, area, but it's not spilling onto that curb, okay? Now, let me get into this border grass. I'll select it, hit my plus icon, and I can hit on this section. There we go. Now I have that border grass on our border. And the last little bit here is let me get into my materials, and I'm going to paint a few things in. Paint in just a, just a forest ground is what I like here. Having a little bit of trouble that with this. Sometimes you can just take this and turn it off just for a second. It makes it easier to apply our material. Forest ground, I want rocky ground here. And in my roadways section, I have some asphalt. I have a sidewalk material. Curb material. That. I want my sidewalk material there. And then remember, I want to delete this terrain. Right? Now, a couple things happen. We've got some infill to do here. Um, I could show you how to fix that, but. Really, it would have been with terrain regions, terrain features, I should say. You can also do that with the built-in terrain, with the in-twin motion. Okay, let's turn that border grass back on. And let's look at what this looks like in a PBR. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. I love to use the new dynamic environment um, with skylight or backdrop HDRIs. I think I like prefer backdrop HDRIs. This is a traditional rendering approach that I've been using for years. So we can um, import something like this where, let's get into the more category of this. We're gonna do a height offset, drop it down. And then we have some pretty realistic lighting coming from the overall scene. And you can switch scenes if you'd like to, or even rotate. Up making a big difference here. From there, you can turn up the intensity if you'd like. And you can see pretty quickly this curb is looking pretty darn good, I, I should say. 
think this looks excellent, actually. So let's say just take the time, make sure that you've got a plan of action for this transition right here. Like I said, you could do it, you could do it with solids if you needed to, you could do it with any number of things. There are going to be just a few caveats from, from using this curve and dropping it in like this. But for the most part, this is going to be, if I adjust my field of view, which I like to do for my camera, drop this down to like a 55. And I come down in like this. This little edits and ends up being really, really quick and easy. I wouldn't fight it. I just wouldn't fight the amount of time it takes to fix that is nothing in, in a Photoshop. So let me just do a screen grab. See, we can let this pan out. We'll put this on a, on a low real quick. That way we get the denoiser at the end of it. There we go. Got a denoiser. Take the screen grab again. Turn this off. Let's fire up Photoshop. Take a look at what it looks like just to repair that small little section. Now you can take that curve that I just created and you can use the surface delete tool or a separate software and delete sections of it just to get the curb. And you can run that curb all the way through your driveway in case you want a, a little bit of a lip at your driveway that looks a little bit more realistic. So that might be something that you want to do. Get to a general brush here. And you can see it'd be very easy to do any number of things here. One is you might just take, well, I like to make a copy of my main layer here, but one is that you might just take the stamp tool and sample an area like this and come and bring this forward, right? That's pretty simple. Same thing over here. And you can even take this and kind of, you know, bend it around the bend here. So a couple little quick fixes. There you go. Pretty good looking shot. Do a little camera raw filter on it. Maybe tweak that texture clarity maybe dehaze just a little bit you can kick up the exposure any number of different things i like to you know throw a little bit of sharpening in here maybe just a slight bit of color and before you know it you got a pretty good looking scene very quickly All right look at that looks pretty good this is not practice this is just playing around so pretty good looking if you don't like this little dirt area here you could of course lower your material region in or your terrain region in twin motion but this again is another quick fix if you want if you think that this needs fixing is you're just going to mask off the sidewalk and you could do an auto mask with that and then same thing stamp tool the top of this fringe and drop it down a little bit so we don't have that little dirt edge there. But I don't know, kind of like it. Looks pretty good. So there we go. Free symbol Friday. Enjoy. If you have any questions about this tool, let me know. Happy to hear it.